The auto flight system consists of the flight directors, the auto throttle, and the autopilots. You can use them separately or together. You can use the flight directors and the auto throttle for all phases of flight. You can use the autopilot for all phases of flight except takeoff. You can connect the auto flight system to the FMC for a fully automated flight. You communicate with the auto flight system through the mode control panel and the FMC. The auto flight system communicates with you through flight mode enunciations displayed on the ADI. The auto flight system flies the airplane by controlling thrust, roll, pitch, and in some cases, yaw, in the same way a pilot does. The lateral path is controlled with modes which control only roll. The vertical path is controlled with combination modes. These modes control both thrust and pitch. There are also combination modes which control thrust, roll, and pitch, such as approach mode. Approach is used to fly a fully automatic approach and landing. During most operations, the FMC and the auto flight system are used together. You can obtain optimum speed and flight path information from the FMC. Then fly the FMC profile by selecting and operating the appropriate modes of the auto flight system. Or if you desire, you can connect the FMC directly to the auto flight system. You do this by engaging two auto flight modes, LNAV and VNAV. LNAV, or lateral navigation, controls the lateral path of the airplane. VNAV, or vertical navigation, controls the vertical path and speed of the airplane. When using LNAV and VNAV, the FMC and the auto flight system will fly the most economical flight profile from climb through descent to your initial approach fix. All you have to do is monitor the system. You can use as little or as much automation as you desire. You, the pilot, must determine the appropriate level of automation for the flight conditions. Now let's learn how to operate the auto flight system by taking a typical flight. Let's begin with pre-flight. 
First, turn on the left flight director. When turned on, the flight director command bars appear and flight director enunciates on the ADI. Flight director enunciates when the flight director is on and the autopilot is not engaged. Flight mode enunciations are shown here. Auto throttle modes are shown here. Pitch modes are shown here. And roll modes are shown here. Newly engaged modes are displayed with a green attention box. The box remains for 10 seconds. On the ground, when the flight director is turned on, takeoff or TO enunciates for both roll and pitch. We'll discuss the details of TO mode when we're at the end of the runway for takeoff. The first officer turns on the right flight director. Next, arm the auto throttle. When armed, the auto throttle is ready to be engaged. Notice there is no enunciation for auto throttle armed. Next, set the bank limit selector to auto. In auto, the bank limit varies between 15 and 25 degrees depending on airspeed. We'll discuss this control in more detail after we get airborne. Next, place the autopilot disengage bar to the up position. This allows the autopilot to be engaged. You just received your final load sheets from dispatch and obtained your clearance. Now, use the IAS mock selector to set V2 in the IAS mock window. Your initial heading after takeoff is 130 degrees. Use the heading selector to set 130 degrees in the heading window. Your initial altitude after takeoff is 5,000 feet. Use the altitude selector to set your initial altitude in the altitude window. This completes the pre-flight of the autoflight system. Here is a summary of the autoflight pre-flight that you can do before you have your papers and clearance. Here is a summary of the autoflight preflight that you can do after you have your papers and clearance. Now that preflight of the mode control panel is complete, Let's use it to fly a typical flight profile. Let's begin from position hold at the end of the active runway. The flight director pitch command is in the parked position at 8 degrees. Do not use this as the target attitude for initial rotation. You've been cleared for takeoff and have advanced the thrust levers to 70% N1. Push the thrust switch to engage the auto throttle for takeoff. The auto throttle engages in N1 mode to advance the thrust levers to takeoff thrust. Whenever N1 enunciates, the thrust levers advance to the selected limit. The takeoff thrust limit is selected on the thrust mode select panel during pre-flight. This is discussed later.
With N1 engaged, moving the thrust levers requires a constant overriding force of the auto throttle servo. As soon as the thrust levers are released, the auto throttle positions them back to the selected limit. At 80 knots, the auto throttle enunciation changes to thrust hold. With thrust hold enunciated, power is removed from the auto throttle. The thrust levers can now be manually positioned without interference from the auto throttle. Let's quickly review takeoff assisted by the auto flight system. After rotation at VR, allow the flight director pitch bar to stabilize at the initial climb attitude before following its commands. In takeoff mode, the flight director adjusts the pitch command to maintain an airspeed V2 plus 15 knots. The flight director pitch bar commands the speed at rotation plus 15 knots if rotation occurs at a speed higher than V2. However, the commanded speed will not exceed V2 plus 25 knots. The takeoff roll mode commands the track established during the takeoff roll. At 400 feet AGL, LNAV can be engaged. LNAV mode gives roll commands to fly the flight plan route. This lateral route is constructed by the FMC, which is based on the flight plan you entered into the FMC during pre-flight. FMC route entry is discussed in another lesson. At flap retraction altitude, normally 1,000 feet AGL, Engage VNAV. When VNAV engages, the IAS mock window blanks, indicating that the FMC is now controlling airspeed. Just like LNAV, VNAV commands are computed by the FMC. With LNAV and VNAV engaged, the airplane flies the most economical lateral and vertical paths possible. The FMC route accounts for factors such as fuel costs, operational costs, and weather conditions. Performance factors are entered during pre-flight and also in flight. This is covered later. Let's review the takeoff again up to this point. Up to now, you have been manually flying the airplane using the flight directors for guidance. The autopilot is always ready for some stick time. Now engage the center autopilot. Command enunciates confirming the autopilot engaged. The autopilot engages in the same roll and pitch modes that were being used by the flight directors. The flight director command bars are still displayed for reference. Now let's see how flight level change mode is used for making climbs and descents. Let's begin by using flight level change instead of VNAV to continue the climb. The first step of any altitude change is to set the new altitude into the MCP altitude window. The second step is to initiate the altitude change by engaging the desired mode, in this case, flight level change. The IAS mock window opens set to the current airspeed. 
You can now set the airspeed manually. Flight level change and speed enunciate for auto throttle and pitch. When flight level change enunciates, the auto throttle sets thrust based on the required altitude change. If the altitude change is small, then the amount of thrust increase is small. If the altitude change is large, the amount of thrust increase is large. In fact, the thrust increase could be up to the climb limit. The auto throttle sets thrust to maintain a target vertical speed. The greater the altitude change, the greater the target vertical speed. When speed appears with the pitch enunciation, pitch controls airspeed. So airplane pitch is adjusted to maintain the speed selected in the IAS Mach window. Passing through 10,000 feet, accelerate to climb speed. The FMC shows the Econ climb speed. Set the climb speed on the MCP. The autopilot adjusts pitch to accelerate to the new speed. Thrust remains constant. Now let's look at level off, beginning with altitude alerts. An altitude alert occurs when within 900 feet of the MCP altitude. At 900 feet before the MCP altitude, the altitude light on each pilot's altimeter illuminates. The display remains this way until within 300 feet of the MCP altitude. Within 300 feet of the MCP altitude, the altitude light extinguishes. After level off, an altitude deviation alert occurs 300 feet away from the MCP altitude. The master caution illuminates, the caution beeper is sounded, and an ICAS alert message is displayed. The caution clears when the airplane returns to within 300 feet of the selected altitude. or descends more than 900 feet from the selected altitude. When approaching the MCP selected altitude, altitude capture automatically engages and altitude capture enunciates on the EADI. The auto throttle engages in speed and now controls airspeed. Altitude capture automatically transitions to altitude hold when the airplane reaches the MCP altitude. After level off, the selected altitude is maintained and both the auto throttle and the pitch enunciations remain the same. You may have noticed a pattern with the thrust and pitch modes. Almost always, one mode controls airspeed, while the other mode controls the vertical path. The enunciation speed indicates which mode is controlling airspeed. In this case, 
Auto throttle controls airspeed. Therefore, pitch maintains the vertical path or altitude. In flight level change, the modes are reversed. Auto throttle controls the vertical path while pitch controls airspeed. To help illustrate the difference, set the FMC recommended econ speed for cruise into the MCP. Since the thrust mode is speed, the thrust levers advance to accelerate the airplane to the new airspeed. Pitch changes very slightly to maintain altitude at the new airspeed. Speed changes can also be made using Mach number. Change the MCP to display Mach number. The MCP and the speed tape both display commanded Mach number. Enter the new Mach number into the MCP. Now, let's look at how the altitude hold switch can be used. It can be used to interrupt a climb or descent. Use flight level change to descend to the new cruise altitude. During the descent, ATC changes your clearance. Use altitude hold to comply with the clearance. If altitude hold is pushed, the airplane initiates a level off to the altitude where the hold switch was pushed. Speed and altitude hold appear again for the thrust and pitch modes. The auto flight system immediately terminates the descent and levels off. Continue the descent to flight level 210 using flight level change. Now let's see how to use the autopilot to comply with radar vectors from ATC. Set the clearance heading. Heading select is engaged by pushing the heading select switch. The heading select switch is located on the end of the heading selector. Push the Heading Select switch to engage the Heading Select Roll Mode. Heading Select enunciates on the ADI, and the airplane turns the shortest direction to the selected heading. Once Heading Select is engaged, Turning the heading selector to a new heading turns the airplane in the direction the selector knob was turned. Now let's look at the heading hold switch. Pushing the heading hold switch engages the heading hold mode. Engage the heading hold mode. The current heading is maintained. If in a turn, when the mode is engaged, the airplane first rolls wings level, then holds its current heading.
The maximum bank angle used in the heading roll modes can be adjusted to any of these settings. The bank limit selector functions in the heading mode only. It has no effect on LNAV. The bank limit selector is the outermost rotary selector. It is used to set the bank limit. In auto, the maximum bank varies depending on true airspeed. Comply with the clearance. Set the maximum bank angle to 10 degrees. Set the bank limit selector back to auto. At the present speed, auto sets the bank to 15 degrees. Changing the bank limit during a turn simply increases or decreases the turn rate. Now let's look at some of the auto throttle controls. There are two ways of disconnecting the auto throttle. You can position the auto throttle arm switch to the off position. Or you can push an auto throttle disconnect switch. An auto throttle disconnect switch is located on each side of the thrust levers. Either switch disengages the servo. If disconnected by the auto throttle arm switch, the auto throttle is no longer armed. None of the auto throttle modes are available, nor is the auto throttle available for speed protection. If disconnected by the auto throttle disconnect switch, the auto throttle remains armed and is available for speed protection. Pushing flight level change, VNAV, speed, thrust, or go around engages the auto throttle. Now disconnect the auto throttle by using an auto throttle disconnect switch. Push the switch a second time to reset the master caution system and cancel the ICAS message. Now that the auto throttle is disengaged, the thrust levers can be moved without interference from the auto throttle. Retard the thrust levers to idle. The thrust levers remain where you set them. Now re engage the auto throttle by pushing the speed switch. The auto throttle engages in the speed mode. Let's look at what happens when pitch modes other than flight level change are engaged after takeoff. Recall, upon initial engagement of flight level change, the command airspeed bug and MCP window reset to the current speed. Also, the thrust reference mode changes from takeoff to climb. Engaging vertical speed after takeoff doesn't change the auto throttle mode, the command airspeed, or the thrust reference mode. When using vertical speed after takeoff, climb thrust can be automatically set by pushing the speed switch when above 400 feet radio altitude. Should level off at the selected MCP altitude occur before a pitch mode is manually selected, the aircraft will continue to accelerate until the auto throttle speed mode is selected. Selecting speed changes the thrust limit from takeoff to climb if above 400 feet radio altitude. Now that flap retraction is complete, increase airspeed to 250 knots.
Comply with the ATC clearance. Now engage the center autopilot. The autopilot engages in the same roll and pitch modes as the flight directors. If the flight directors are not on, the autopilot engages in the following modes. For roll, the autopilot engages in heading hold. For pitch, the autopilot engages in vertical speed. Now change to a vertical speed climb. Push the vertical speed switch. Engaging vertical speed opens the vertical speed window at the current rate of climb. Pitch changes from controlling airspeed to controlling vertical speed. The auto throttle controls airspeed. Reduce the rate of climb to 1500 feet per minute with the vertical speed selector. Now let's skip ahead to the cruise phase of flight. While on radar vectors to your flight plan route, ATC vectors you around some thunderstorms. Push the LNAV switch. Since the distance from the LNAV course is more than one turning radius of the aircraft, LNAV arms. When within the turning radius of the aircraft, LNAV engages and turns on to the planned route. Now, let's skip ahead again and look at the approach phase of flight. We are now on an intercept heading to the localizer, and ATC just cleared us for the ILS approach. Arm the approach mode. Localizer and glide slope armed enunciation appear on the ADI. Before localizer and glide slope capture, Approach mode can be disarmed by pushing the approach switch a second time or by selecting a different pitch or roll mode. The localizer captures if the intercept track angle is within 120 degrees of the localizer course. On localizer capture, the inbound heading automatically sets on the MCP. With localizer captured and glide slope armed, the approach mode can be disengaged by selecting another roll mode. Now let's return to our regularly scheduled approach. Once the glide slope is captured, the missed approach altitude can be set. Set the missed approach altitude for this approach to 5,000 feet. Once both the localizer and glide slope are captured, the approach mode can only be disengaged by pushing a go-around switch, disengaging the autopilot and turning off both flight directors. Below 1,500 feet radio altitude, land 3, rollout, and flare enunciate that the engaged autopilots are operating normally for an automatic landing. If a crosswind is present, runway alignment occurs at 500 feet. The runway alignment mode reduces the crab angle established during crosswind conditions prior to automatic landing. There is no enunciation when the airplane aligns with the runway. At approximately 15 feet radio altitude, flare engages. At 15 feet radio altitude, 
the auto throttle begins retarding the thrust to idle. About 5 feet radio altitude, rollout engages, and the autopilot controls the rudder and the nose wheel steering to keep the airplane on localizer center line. Selecting reverse thrust disconnects the auto throttle. When disconnected this way, the ICAST message does not display and the caution light and the auto throttle disconnect light do not illuminate. Finally, before turning off the runway, disconnect the autopilot with a disconnect switch on the control wheel and cancel the warning with a second push. Re-engaging the autopilot or second push of the disconnect switch are the only ways to cancel both the ICAST message and the oral warning. This completes the instruction section of this lesson. Previously, LNAV and VNAV were engaged. Now, let's see how we can use some of the MCP auto flight controls to easily accommodate some vertical path changes without disengaging VNAV. VNAV can be engaged after takeoff if there is an active flight plan in the FMC. And the performance data has been entered in the FMC. VNAV can be engaged during any phase of flight by pushing the VNAV switch. Engage VNAV. The airspeed window blanks. Pitch engages in VNAV speed. And the auto throttle changes to N1. This mode of VNAV closely resembles flight level change. Pitch maintains airspeed, while auto throttle controls the vertical path. The FMC uses full climb thrust because it is a more efficient way to climb to cruise altitude. Airspeed commands are generated by the FMC and sent to the autopilot. The FMC sets the speed bug to the new airspeed. And pitch is adjusted to accelerate to the new airspeed. The FMC has the waypoints. And altitude constraints entered on the root legs page. This data is entered during pre-flight and discussed later. A 5,000 foot altitude constraint is displayed for Orton. Therefore, VNAV will level the airplane at this altitude, even though the MCP is set to 10,000 feet. The pitch and auto throttle modes change to level the airplane at the Orton altitude restriction. The auto throttle mode controls airspeed while the pitch mode controls vertical path. The vertical path, in this case, is level flight at 5,000 feet. Notice that VNAV remained engaged. When in level flight, the VNAV path mode is similar to the altitude hold mode. Now, let's see how to use the MCP to delete FMC altitude constraints like the one at Orton. The MCP is already set, but the FMC still has the altitude constraints at Orton and Alder. In addition to setting altitudes, the altitude selector is a momentary action switch.
Each push of the altitude selector deletes one FMC altitude constraint between the airplane altitude and the MCP altitude. Push the altitude selector to delete the altitude constraint at Orton. Auto throttle and pitch modes change to N1 and VNAV speed to satisfy the next altitude constraint. Because the Orton altitude constraint is deleted. Push the altitude selector again. Both altitude restrictions are deleted. Note that waypoints Orton and Alder remain in the FMC flight plan. An unrestricted climb to the next FMC altitude is initiated. The MCP is still set at 10,000 feet. But there are no altitude restrictions on the FMC legs page. And the FMC cruise altitude is flight level 250. Since the MCP window altitude is lower than the FMC cruise altitude, the airplane levels off at the MCP altitude. The thrust mode changes to speed, and the pitch mode changes to VNAV altitude. VNAV altitude becomes the VNAV pitch mode when the airplane levels at the MCP altitude. This mode operates the same as VNAV path to maintain altitude. The VNAV altitude enunciation indicates that you are level at the MCP altitude and not an FMC altitude. Again, notice that VNAV remains engaged. To continue the climb in VNAV, first set the clearance altitude. Then, push the altitude selector. Auto throttle and pitch modes change to N1 and VNAV speed. And the airplane begins to climb to cruise altitude. Before reaching the FMC cruise altitude, ATC issues a new cruise altitude. The FMC has the cruise altitude set to flight level 250. To comply with the clearance and update the FMC, first set the MCP altitude. Next, push the altitude selector. With no FMC altitude constraints and the MCP altitude set above the FMC cruise altitude, Pushing the altitude selector changes the FMC cruise altitude to the MCP window value. And the airplane levels at the new altitude. Cruise climbs and cruise descents can also be performed while remaining in VNAV. This is accomplished with the altitude selector in a manner similar to what was previously shown. Perform a cruise climb to the new clearance altitude. First, set the MCP altitude. Push the altitude selector. The FMC cruise altitude changes. Auto throttle and pitch modes change to N1 and VNAV speed. And the airplane climbs to the new altitude. Cruise descents are performed in the same manner. However, cruise descents should only be initiated if the airplane position is greater than 50 miles from top of descent. 
Early VNAV descents can be initiated with the MCP when within 50 nautical miles of the top of descent point. Set the MCP altitude. Push the altitude selector. The airplane begins to descend in VNAV. The target vertical speed is controlled by the autothrottle. Pitch controls the airspeed. The airplane continues this descent until the path is intercepted. Once on the FMC calculated vertical path, the auto throttle and pitch modes change back to normal descent indications. Next, let's look at re-engaging VNAV after a late descent. It seems like ATC never lets us fly the descent profile that we want. The airplane did not begin descending at the top of descent point because the MCP is still set to cruise altitude. VNAV altitude enunciates to make you aware that the airplane is level at the MCP window altitude, not an FMC altitude. ATC has provided descent clearance. Set the MCP. Push the altitude selector to begin the descent. The pitch mode changes to VNAV speed. The auto throttle initially changes to idle as the thrust levers are retarded to idle. Thrust hold displays when the thrust levers reach idle. The airplane begins an idle thrust descent. This airplane's descent path is above the VNAV path. The airplane may never intercept the path. One way to increase descent rate is to increase airspeed. Push the IAS Mach selector. The IAS Mach window opens at the currently maintained FMC speed. Notice there was not a mode change and VNAV remained engaged. The only change is that you are now setting speed instead of the FMC. This is called speed intervention. Set 290 knots to accelerate the airplane. When the airplane is closing on the path, Speed intervention must be deselected for VNAV to capture the path. Push the IAS mock selector. The window blanks. The active pitch mode changes to VNAV path. And the commanded speed returns to the FMC economy speed. Next, let's look at a go-around. Go-around arms when glide slope captures or the flaps are extended and the thrust reference mode on ICAS changes to go-around. Push either go-around switch to initiate the go-around. The auto throttle engages in go around mode. Thrust is set for a 2,000 feet per minute climb. All three autopilots remain engaged until pitch or roll mode is selected. Go around enunciates for roll and for pitch. The go around roll mode commands bank to maintain ground track. The go-around pitch mode increases pitch to maintain existing speed or the selected MCP speed, whichever is higher.
When above 400 feet, a different roll mode may be selected. Engage LNAV. Notice the left and right autopilots disengage after selection of a roll mode. Now we're at flap retraction altitude. Increase airspeed to 220. Select climb on the thrust mode select panel. Retract flaps on schedule. Continue. After flap retraction, a pitch mode may be engaged. Engage VNAV. Correct. The autopilot disconnect warning message and autopilot disconnect light display when the autopilots disconnect. If the autopilot system senses a failure in one of its components, the autopilot disengages. Reset the autopilot and master warning system. Engage one of the two functional autopilots. The selected autopilot engages. The autopilot caution message and autopilot annunciator light display when the autopilot is in a degraded mode but still operating. For example, a fault has been detected in the active roll mode. The autopilot caution message and light also display when a fault is detected in the engaged pitch mode. The auto throttle disconnect caution message and auto throttle disconnect light display when a failure is detected in the auto throttle system. After the system disconnects, reset the auto throttle and master caution system. That switch only resets the master caution system. It does not reset the auto throttle system. After an auto throttle disconnect, you may attempt to re engage the auto throttle. Let's conclude this lesson by taking a look at how Autoland non-normals are enunciated. The Autoland Status Enunciator, or ASA, monitors the autopilots and their supporting systems. The ASAs are used to indicate the functional status of the three autopilots, which determine the automatic landing capability of the airplane. Now let's see what happens when we lose one of the supporting systems necessary for a triple autopilot landing. If a supporting system is lost at any time during flight or a malfunction occurs in one of the autopilots, no land three enunciates. This enunciation remains in view for the duration of the flight. In addition, during the approach at 1,500 feet radio altitude, land 2 enunciates. Indicating only two autopilots are engaged and ready to make the landing. When below 200 feet radio altitude with land 2 or land 3 enunciated, the enunciations cannot change. Unless a failure occurs that causes a no autoland condition.
Should another malfunction occur that adversely affects two of the autopilots, no Autoland enunciates and remains in view for the duration of the flight. With no Land 3 or no Autoland enunciated, selecting Approach Mode may or may not arm the remaining autopilot depending on the type of failure. If the autopilots have already been armed when no Autoland or no Land 3 enunciates, the type of failure may or may not disengage the associated autopilot. For example, a failure of the right radio altimeter is not severe enough to disengage the right autopilot. Should the failure be corrected that caused the ASA enunciations, you can reset the enunciators with the push reset switches. Or the enunciators will reset automatically when you select approach mode. To complete this lesson, Clear the enunciations on the ASAs.